Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning, I'm Joel. Merry Christmas to y'all. Everyone's real quiet this morning. Feliz Navidad. Maybe that's what I should have sang. Yeah. Hey, well, we're finishing up our series today called Home. What is it called? Home for Christmas. Yeah, home for the holidays. That's not it. Home for Christmas. And uh, you know, one of the beautiful things about Crossroads, I've been hanging out here for about six years now. I'm loving it. Loving every moment. Did not even know the gift God was giving me when I came to this church and just came to serve Pastor Marcus and Natalie as best as I could. And one of the things that I've loved here is we've seen a lot of people come in here and experience the love of Christ. And when you experience the love of Christ, his, his love comes inside of you. There's this verse that says the love of Christ compels you. And that, that word is a weird word, compels. It literally means he comes and wraps his hands around you and squeezes you like a tube of toothpaste. Obviously, that's a little extension. There wasn't toothpaste back in the day when it was written. But the feeling is that when God's love comes in, you want, there's something in you that says, I want to change some things. And a lot of you, we've seen this, and change takes time, but we've seen over and over again that when God's love comes into people's hearts here, they come and they start to change the course of their family's history. Maybe their family has a history of addiction, and they say, no, it stops with me. We're going to change things. Maybe there's a a history of abuse, and they say, no, it's going to stop with me. Christ's love is in me, and I'm going to change the course of things. And I think part of the reason this is such a natural thing that comes out at Crossroads Church as somebody who's just been observing this for several years is because that is the story of what has happened in the life of our, of our pastors. And we're going to talk this morning, I'm going to interview uh, somebody very familiar to many of you, Pastor Natalie, if you're new here, it's Pastor Marcus's uh, wife, Natalie Avalos. She has been, y'all, y'all been together a long time, 44 years. 44 years, and she's only 47, 48, right? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the math doesn't work, but it's going to be a great interview. So I want to just, let's just get right into the interview. If you guys would welcome Pastor Natalie. Yeah. All right. Say something funny. Uh, something funny. I'm, I'm going to, pre- okay. I'm going to pretend that you all are in my living room because uh, many of you have been, and I love that. And so I'm just going to pretend like that. Okay. And you guys pretend like you're just at my house. And um, instead of, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to jump right in. We have a heckler. (laughs) We do have a heckler. (laughs) I'm going to jump right into it. Okay. So here's my my first question. This whole series, we've been talking, uh, different staff members have been talking about what Jesus looked like in your home growing up at Christmas. Yep. Yep. What did Jesus look like in your family growing up? Wow. Well, so first of all, um, he was not there. Um, he wasn't there for a long time in our home. Um, the thing about my house at Christmas time is we were really blessed, but we weren't really giving God the glory for how blessed we were. Um, and so there was tons of presents under the tree. Mom and dad did that really, really big. Um, we were super, I mean, honestly, we really were blessed. We had a nanny who took care of us. My parents traveled every summer. We lived in a different um, state while dad, um, started the steel mill company. So we had stuff, but what was really missing was the love of God in our home. And, um, so during the holidays, if we went to my grandma's house, which she was lived on the poorest side of town here in Seguin, and then you felt the love because mm. grandma, she had like, she had the Lord in her life. And that light was so strong in her that um, she just bought, could afford little things because there was tons of us kids. But she, yeah, socks. We all, I miss getting socks from grandma. But um, (laughs) seriously, I mean, they were the best socks ever, you know, because it was covered with love. And and love is where it's at, really, at Christmas time. I remember you telling me that one time. You said, Joel, love is all we need. I'm like, Natalie, that's a Beatles song. (laughs) It's true. He knows I'm a don't, hippie. Don't give me that cheesy hippie <laughs> nonsense. But you were, we were talking this week about this <laughs> verse. And can you pop that verse up, guys? It really basically says love is all we need. I right. want to read it to us here. I love this verse from First John. Yeah, it says, dear friends, let us love one another. Go back one. Sorry. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 
Whoever does not love God, or whoever does not love, does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live, we might live through him. Next verse, or next part of the verse. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. For no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. And in his love, this is my favorite, favorite part. In his love, yes, and in his love is made complete, how? In us. And I love this scripture so much because it's so true. How people are ever going to see light is if you're out there giving it to him on Christmas days. On the days of Christmas, when I don't know if y'all have gone shopping. I try not to go shopping during Christmas time um, because it's crazy. And people are so mean at Christmas time. It's crazy. I'm like, it's Christmas, y'all. Y'all are supposed to be nice. But um, so I try not to go because here's my thing is I see people's faces and I'm a big filler of people's hurts and pains. And I'm thinking no amount of money you're going to spend on those presents is going to heal your heart is what I'm thinking when I'm out there and I have to see people. But here's what I know will heal the heart, is the light of God's love in us. And that is what, to me, that Christmas is about. Let's close in prayer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think you made a, I, what, a point that was really interesting to me was, is, and I think this is a huge point for a lot of the people here, is you, you said you, you felt the love from your grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot, of, a lot of people here are in a position where maybe you're looking at your kids and going, man, they're missing the point of Christmas. Don't discount the power you might have as that's a parent, right. a, a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or a cousin or maybe somebody that's just kind of been adopted into the family. They're, love, when it's experienced, it's one of those things that people know when, they're, when they see it. And they may say, man, I know mom and dad, they're, they're giving me all these presents, but what they're probably going to remember more than anything is what they experienced from you, just like the example there. She gave me socks with a lot of love. With a and lot that's, of love. that's a huge thing. So what, you have these two experiences, right? You have your home over here where initially it wasn't a place filled with God's love. You felt this love over here. What have you had to bring to your family to change the course of history? Like you, you guys have really changed the course of, of, of your family history and said, right. nope, it stops here. What have you brought specifically to your family Changes you made, things you implemented. That right. Well, so we, um, Marcus and I, we were really poor. Um, and um, what we could give our children was teaching them how to love others. Um, so we didn't have much, but what we did was we made gifts in our house. And we found other people more needy than us. And we told our kids, and it wasn't expensive things that we bought to give away. It was like puzzles and socks, cute socks, different things. But really, we were trying to teach our children that you, love came you knit down. You those socks, right? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, I crocheted okay. them. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, um, not knit, I crocheted. Oh, sorry, but sorry. Um, anyway, uh, the, the thing with the kids was we wanted them to see that our home was full of love and not just love in the home under the tree, but we wanted to get out from under the tree and out to the world and show our kids um, how to take care of others. Because we knew that one day, right, like all of us, we won't be here, but we hope that the things that we leave behind, not the gifts under the tree that are going to go in the landfill, but the hearts that you open up to your children about other people, that you will take forever into eternity and beyond. And they'll pass that on to their kids Hopefully, that's the goal, right? Because I feel like my grandmother passed that on to me. But once Christ came in our home, it was all about Jesus, really. I know that sounds cliche-ish, but it was. It was about him and him alone. And so um, even last night, the kids came over. We didn't have a lot of presents to open up because my kids know that it's not about that. It's about us spending time with one another sharing the love of God that he's, he saved Marcus and I for so much yucky stuff that we, all we can do is give him our lives. And during Christmas time, what's a better way to do that than to be involved in other people's lives in dark places, bring the light. 
Yeah. So I want to bring something else up because you just said, get out from under the Christmas tree. I love that line. And, uh, because Don't write a book about it. I'm I won't, serious. I won't. That's your book to write. That's your book to write. I mean, your name is Natalie. That means child of Christmas. It means Christmas Natal child. And I was word. born in March, but yes. yes. Maybe. It's, it was meant to be. Yeah. You, uh, you just said something that's near and dear to my heart because you just took a team to Guatemala last week. And we haven't actually really talked about that whole trip. Can you give us a, like a three minute synopsis of what you did in Guatemala yes, for, the, yes. for the kids? So, oh my God, y'all, I wanted to bring all the grandmas and all the kids back with me from Guatemala and all the villages, all of them, because these people, let me tell you what, they have dirt floors for, they're, they're sweeping every morning when they wake up, but their dirt floors are clean. They have, um, we went to the jungles, like some really remote parts. I don't think you guys got to go to, um, like it was the, the roads. I wouldn't even call them roads. They were paths that were made roads. But anyway, the kids, the joy on their faces, the, the contentment and peace that they have, um, even in the most, in my opinion, horrific place to live, they find beauty. And I think they find beauty because they're together as families. And they're surrounded by sustainable stuff like bananas, pineapples, um, all kinds of coffee beans. They're surrounded by things that they know that they can survive on. And I just found um, so much peace. Mm. Um, I didn't think I would because I'm not a missions girl. I love the USA. <laughs> I'm the ugly American. Everybody doesn't want to come to their country. <laughs> But um, anyway, but it was it was so beautiful uh, to see the love and the contentment and the gratitude. We just gave little candy bags to the kids, and it's as if we had given them a whole new house. I mean, that's why, to me, that's what Christmas is all about. It's about getting out of you and being present with the ones around you. Not the presence, but being present with the ones around you. You know, one of the interesting things, I grew up in Guatemala, so that's why I was saying it was near and dear to my heart. One of the interesting things we saw in Guatemala was back to this thing of Christ's love changing things. We would be walking in these shanty towns, basically, where people had made their homes of cardboard, and if they could get a piece of wood or a pallet, mm -hmm. they were living in homes made of this. But what was fascinating is you'd walk along, and then you'd see some of the houses that things were just a little bit more put together. They were dusting the dust, and they were like <laughs> sweeping the dust. And you're like, wow, there's something different about that house. And invariably, you talk to those people, and you found out they had a relationship with Christ. There's something that happens when you change the inside. You want to change the outside. Amen. There's something you go, man, there's some, I feel better about myself inside, and it makes you want to change things outside. And that's an interesting observation she made. I'm guessing a lot of those families where they were sweeping the floor, uh, it's just a weird thing. You think even in the middle of those, that dark, destitute situation, you can see Christ's love shining through and how it changes the way we act and what we do. Amen. Amen. And you know, I think that um, what poor, the word poor, it's a state of mind, y'all, mm. because these kids, if I had told them that they were poor, they would be like, really? Because what they're doing is they're loving the life they live. And I think that's another thing that's a takeaway at Christmas time, you know, is it's not about the stuff. I mean, it's great. And I want to say thank you to all of y'all who purchased me something. I really do. I mean, <laughs> but, for the stuff, but yeah. you know what it's connected for me to is you, the person. Mm -hmm. I'm connected to the person, not the present. And in our home, what I'm connected to is his presence in the midst of our home. And so the gospel story, yeah, a little kid clapped. I love that. Um, and so that to me is like the most important thing. So I get it. I wanted to read something real quick before I lose my train of thought, because I just thought um, when, when the Lord put this in my heart, um, I wanted to read this to y'all. So for me, Christmas is love and love gives light in dark places of our world through laughter, through our presence in the lives of those around us. The gift giver came into our hearts and home and never left. He is still ready to give today. He gives salvation to all who call upon his name, hope in a hopeless situation, peace in the midst of turmoil, joy over sorrow, and lots and lots of love to those who think they are unlovable. Heaven gave and the earth received the greatest gift of all, the love of our Father, the gift in his Son, so home for Christmas means love. That's good. 
<laughs> one of the things that the themes I hear you, and we talked about this earlier this week, one mm -hmm. of the themes I think the most important theme is that we got to make sure we're not getting caught up in the physical over the spiritual importance. There's a Catholic uh, priest many years ago, he said this, a famous quote, he said, we are not uh, spiritual beings or human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So true. And it's so easy to get caught up in the physical elements of Christmas and the hoopla, wanting to give the, fit, the tangible gifts. But I think one of the most important things to remember always, this is why Paul says we fix our eyes not on what is uh, seen, but we fix our eyes on what is unseen because what's seen is temporary. That's right. What's seen, what you're giving those gifts, they're going to end up in a landfill one of these days. Uh, he who dies with the most toys still dies. <laughs> Say that again because that's funny. No, I, didn't make a, I didn't come up with that, but he who dies with the most toys still dies, right? And, and, and you don't like, what do you hear? So a hearse, you never see a hearse carrying a U Haul trailer, that's right? right? Uh, you leave it behind, but what is stays is that spiritual permanent element of what's what we're give to people, and that's you know you've heard me quote this verse before. There's a verse that says the grass will fade and the flower will wither, but the word of the Lord will live on forever. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things you can be putting into your heart, into your children's heart, is the word of God that will live on forever. Right. Education, good thing to get. It's great that they learn math going to be helpful. But what's going to live on forever? God don't need our math. But the words of the Lord, yes. they live on forever and they bring life, right? Science. Great to learn science. What's going to live on forever is not science. We won't have any need for science when we know the guy who created it all personally, face to face. But it says the words of the Lord will live on forever. Amen. There's this element we have to constantly remind ourselves, I've got to make sure I'm staying focused on the spiritual over the physical. And I right. think that's one of the most important elements at Christmas is don't get caught up in the physical element of it. Even the idea of like, man, I couldn't get the family couldn't get together this year. Like they're not physically present. Hey, we live in a beautiful time of technology where even if they're not physically present, do yeah. the best you can online. Get on FaceTime and talk to them. And you may lament saying, oh, I wish they were here. But if they're not, you just deal with the cards you've been given and say, Lord, I trust this is what this Christmas is supposed to be. You be present. You be there with what he's got. So what would be the last kind of last two things you'd leave with us as we're oh. going after our Christmas celebrations here? Like it's about to get crazy here tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> what are the last two things you'd leave okay, with us as we so go? Okay, so I have a couple of key uh, encouragement points I'd like to share with y'all. Um, I was thinking about this, um, and it kind of goes to what you were talking about, the landfills. You know, in my home, like we had like really big gifts, all kinds of great stuff that came our way, um, my brother and myself. Um, but when my parents split up, none of that stuff, I don't know where any of it is. I mean, it didn't, it didn't move with me. The stuff didn't move with me. Um, it, it stayed wherever it stayed, and um, it was used for however long it was used. But um, in my home as adult now, um, I was talking about earlier about being present. Like yesterday, um, what I want to leave with y'all is that when your family comes over, and I know maybe for some of y'all, like I talk to one of my daughters every day, three and four times a day, every day, three and four times a day. And sometimes I get super annoyed. Bianca, if you're listening, I'm sorry. You just said who it was. There's three they could have just guessed, right? Oh my goodness. Anyway, but this morning I sent her a text and I told her how happy that it made me for her and her family to come over and spend the whole day with us. Um, and that I love talking to her three and four times a day. And I would miss that if I didn't hear her voice. And so for some of you, maybe you've been holding on to something, something that's not really good for you to hold on to anymore. And maybe today is the day for you to let it go. Maybe there's that person that needs to hear your voice, needs to hear, not just because it's connected to you, but because it's connected to God. Your voice is connected to God for them. And, or maybe you weren't a good witness at one of your Christmas parties. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> so um, you can change that with a phone call. Like Joel said, technology is amazing nowadays. Um, it's just so beautiful. This is the time, the one time of the year that people's hearts are so open, mm -hmm. y'all. Yeah. They're so open. They're ready to do things they've never done before. They're ready to give things they've never gave before. And this is the time where they also need to learn how to receive. And what do they need to receive? The love of God. Because that will translate all things throughout the whole year and not just this season. I want to make a point off of that too because sometimes making that phone call requires a little humility on your part. 
You got to get over yourself. You got to get over, well, they, they don't deserve it after what they did. Listen, you know the beautiful thing about Christmas? It's the most powerful man in the universe coming and humbling himself as a child. Amen. The ultimate humility. Like the guy who made you came in our form and was dependent on us for those first few years, just like any baby. And maybe that's the, the gift you need to give this year is just humble your freaking self. <laughs> Everybody knows you're the one in the wrong. Just get over it, right? And make the apology because the hearts are open right now. And this is a chance for you to, to get those relationships back together. So. And here's another thing, too, about bringing into your home. Joel was talk, talking about, um, I'm going to have a second little thing here, is that bring the Christmas story back into your house. Mm, that's good. Let people know, even if they're adults, you'd be surprised how many people don't even know the Christmas story, the true meaning of Christmas. And so um, bring that back to your house and pass that and pay it forward to your children and your children's children. Because, again, um, eternity is why we live, right? Eternity is why he came down. Eternity is connected to all of who you are as a spiritual being. And like Joel was saying, you know, the physical, you can get real easy into the physical of like, wow, so-and-so looked like they got a brand new car across the road from us. Wow, I wonder how much interest they're paying on it. Who <laughs> cares? The thing of it is, is if your car runs great and it takes gas like everybody else's and you got a great vehicle, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we've had crazy cars. And so I just want to say that, yes, focus on the eternal, the spiritual, the love of God that's been shed abroad for all of our hearts. And I also want to take a minute just to respect and honor and reverence my husband, who has been so good at leading our home. Um, to always remember to put Christ first. All the things, all the things that we've de done for years, it's because he's reminded us of how um, much gratitude we need to have for the life God has given us. And I wanna just thank you for that. All right. <laughs> so I wanna close the service. If everybody could stand here, I'm gonna ask Pastor Marcus to send us out with a Christmas blessing over our families. And as we go to the celebrations, the, the, as the parties begin, uh, Pastor Marcus, just send us out. Send you out. Father, you're so good to us. I thank you for stories. I thank you for how you invade. Uh, even when you're not invited, you invade these places and cause change. And You're the one that makes a difference. And I know these families here, Father God, that I just love them so much. I just pray that you would just empower your love to them. Just, man, just be a blessing to them. Let them let them see your love and light this week. Turn it around for them, Lord God. There's no greater love than for one to lay down their life for another. And I just pray that we can be that example this holiday season. So we just speak your blessings upon them. We thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you that they get everything that they need. Most of all, that they receive Christ in fullness. So we just commit all this to you. We love you. We bless you. We thank you for a great candlelight service and for the rest of this day. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said amen. Hey, listen, real quick. There's two exits. We got to turn this around 9, 10, and 11 o'clock. And we've got some, at the gathering place, there's a bunch of fellowship and stuff and cookies and tamales and tacos and all kinds of stuff. But... Be blessed, man. Have a great, great holiday Christmas. We will be in town. We'll see you tonight, actually, 6 o'clock. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.